Hello everyone and welcome back to Atlas. Unless you guys are new to the channel, then guess what? It's really nice to meet you guys. So in today's video, we're going to be discussing what happened previously in chapter 296 of My Hero Academia, aka Boku no Hero Academia. But we're also going to go into the rumors, uh, potential spoilers of what's going to be happening up in the next chapter. <clears throat> Excuse me about that. And if you guys are new to the channel, don't forget to hit subscribe, hit that thumbs up like button. If we can, let's try to get to 100 likes on this video at least. It's really appreciated. Definitely helps me out, uh, grows this community space. And I want to have more anime people in the community. And I'm sure you guys love to meet other people that also like anime. Uh, you know, drop a comment down below. Let us know what you've been thinking about everything that's going on recently with this series. If you have any theories about what you think is going to happen next. And also, very important, guys. It's so important. Click the bell icon. YouTube has a horrible time of actually alerting people of videos, and clicking the bell icon is the best way that we have, at least, so that you can stay up to date with things. All right, so um, aside from that, the only other thing, I'm the creator of a series called Revival, which is a shonen style manga. I've got seven chapters you can read for free. You don't even need to make an account on the website. The link is in the description for that. So if you like My Hero Academia, Naruto, uh, Inuyasha, One Piece, Bleach, that kind of a thing, then this might be up your alley. And again, it's free. You can check that out. And I got an animation channel as well I do here on YouTube. Link's in the description there too. My Hero Academia, Chapter 297, Gran Torino's Death, All for One's Return. My Hero Academia, Chapter 297, will experience a delay as the manga goes on a one-week hiatus. But when it returns, it will feature a new arc as it also continues to deal with the previous battle's aftermath. My Hero Academia, Chapter 297, will reveal what happened to the pro heroes and the League of Villains after the epic fight. Anyhow, as the official leaks and spoilers are yet to be out, fans now cast their predictions on what may happen. Chapter 297, spoilers, predictions, and more. My Hero Academia, Chapter 296, revealed the heroes who had met their demise after the PLF War. Aside from Midnight, other heroes also died. So in Chapter 297, it will show who among the fan-favorite characters have sustained severe injuries and survived. It may also reveal the truth about Gran Torino's untimely death on its hospital bed, Black Toro noted. Fans may see Ochako Uraraka's, Ur uh, I, I forgot how to say the last name on that, sorry about that, decision to leave the hero business after witnessing the destruction. To recall, Endeavor has also successfully ruined their good image. Urakawa, Urakara, Jeez, I'm having such a hard time saying that. I'm sorry, guys. <clears throat> uh, excuse me. Arakara seems to show a lot of red flags as of late. My Hero Academia, Chapter 297, will reveal if the rumors are true that she is the real Himio Toga hiding behind Arakara's personality. Meanwhile, Twitter user Atsushi dropped a show preview for the new chapter. The worst is not over yet, he tweeted. According to International Business Times, it seems to hint at All for One's return, teasing far worse things are about to happen. Will fans once again see the sensei? Chapter 296 Recap <clears throat> Excuse me, guys. My Hero Academia Chapter 296 started with the heroes, villains, and civilians dealing with the battle's aftermath. The survivors were at the front line, while others rushed to ground zero to stop Shigaraki. Alternatively, the near high ends collaborated and started the disruption strategies. However, Shigaraki and a few civilians had managed to escape, while the heroes had captured Gi Giganto Machia and Mr. Compress. In total, the heroes had arrested 16,929 individuals, while 132 escaped. On the other hand, the Paranormal Liberation Front's supporters were in custody for questioning. The previous chapter also featured the heroes and civilians' mental state as they tried to deal with the situation. A good number of heroes wanted to give up after seeing the ruins. They found the destruction too much to deal with, so they were thinking of quitting. Yaomomo, Mina, and Krishima mourned Midnight's death while Shigaraki's revival was explained. What will happen next will be seen in My Hero Academia, Chapter 297. It is set to be out on Sunday, January 17th on Viz Media, Shonen Jump, and Manga Plus platforms. 
and websites. So as of the time of me recording this video, we're about 10 days away, a little bit over a week, right? These guys are watching this video. Um, obviously, it might be less time by then. And we might actually end up getting more spoilers. If we do, I would like to do further videos um, engaging in that. <coughs> Excuse me. Again, sorry about that, guys. So let's go ahead and go into some theories on things. So first off, we're talking about Gran Torino's death, right? Do you guys feel that it is time for him to move on? And if he is going to be on his deathbed, something that we see as a recurring plot point is typically there's a bit of information that is relayed on to another character. And that either instills in them a new form of motivation, of confidence, or something that can be referred to at a later point in time. And oftentimes we see them have these moments like they whisper something and you sit back and you're wondering, well, what was it that they just said? And you don't actually find out until it's way later on. So it leaves you in a nice little cliffhanger. Do you see something like that happening if that's what's going to take place? And who do you think is going to be surrounded around him in his deathbed at the time of his passing? Uh, personally, I could see it being more of just a one-on-one -on -one relationship between him and All Might. Um, as the others may have a moment to be able to speak with them, but then they have a one-on-one -on -one conversation between the two of them as they have had such a very close relationship in the past. Deku might be in there. Uh, we, we could see some of the other characters as well, but I don't know. I think it would be interesting if he does pass on that he has just a personal one-on-one -on -one conversation with someone. Uh, something else that might be interesting too is if... <clears throat> what causes him to pass on <clears throat> geez <clears throat> i don't know where this is coming from sorry about that guys if something that was to come on was one of the villains happens to appear such as all for one if he gains his abilities and he's able to teleport himself into the hospital room when no one's around and essentially be able to finish him off when it looks like he does have a chance to survive and then he teleports out before anyone could notice or he waits until someone comes in but it's already too late and that's like the last image. Can you imagine if Deku saw all for one finish off his mentor? And having that stuck in his head after everything else that just happened, right? And obviously Deku's not in a good uh, condition himself either. So for him to be moving around much, it's going to be very difficult. I don't know if he'll be able to get healed enough just to where he can go inside a wheelchair and kind of walk around. But I don't really see him having enough strength to uh, fully mobilize himself. I mean, this is absolutely uh, very damaging on his body in this latest fight. <clears throat> I'm so sorry about coughing, guys. I'm trying not to, but um, it definitely helps me when I do it for now. And so let me know what you guys think about that. Now, if we go ahead and take a look at how the last chapter had ended in chapter 296, you can actually see that we have Shigaraki, right? Uh, or more specifically, Tomura Shigaraki, whose body is now laying down on the ground. And this is basically the shell because uh, the essence of of Shigaraki is still living on through this shell. And the whole point was that the Nomu were bringing them back to be able to pair him up with the other body. <clears throat> <clears throat> Man, I'm so sorry, guys. <clears throat> and so the thing is, the way I look at it, I think Shigaraki is going to use the fact that he had transmitted his power into this body, his essence. It is going to allow that to deteriorate the wall, to allow him to get access back to his regular body. And with the help of the Nomu, they're going to be able to then transfer over his powers back to his previous body, in addition to having now acquired this other ability to essentially disintegrate things. And it's been modified uh, on top of everything else. Essentially, it's reached its peak climax. Now, I don't know if through this process that Tomura is going to be able to still survive and come back in some way. It, I would find it very interesting if they have some sort of a conversation, like he comes back to life, and Tomura now has no longer uh, an ability, and basically this whole time, all for one, was using this as uh, an ability to... Uh, um, shape him 
and preparing his body. Think about like Naruto, for example, what happened with Orochimaru and with Sasuke. Well, Orochimaru wanted to get Sasuke's body to a level of maturity as well as he had to wait a certain amount of time. But even with the days of the curse mark, he wanted to prepare his vessel before he transmits himself over to another position. When you take it into account with all for one, he has a lot of physical issues, as you guys can actually see here, the scar tissue that's going over his face. Now, he can actually still see, and this is one of the things that I'm going to be discussing about in this video. Uh, it's due to an ability that he has with, like, ultra ultraviolet views or, or something like that. Um, I'll be talking about that in just a minute here. But anyways, so... If Tamura still survives, I would not be surprised if he is left powerless at this point. Everything was set up as a means to be able to essentially uh, try and get All Might to no longer have his ability to, if he does transmit it onto someone else, to transmit it to someone who is unprepared for it, someone that has not gained enough experience with it to know how to handle it, and therefore puts them at a significant disadvantage. And by swapping over his ability, which is what was talked about right here at the top, <clears throat> this allowed him to take a precautionary step. So let's go ahead and go into some of the stuff going on with All for One. <clears throat> <clears throat> In the aftermath of the Kamino incident, it was revealed that All for One foresaw the possibility of his death at the hands of All Might, and knew if that were to happen, he would be unable to transfer his All for One quirk onto Tamura as planned. To ensure the inheritance of his power was fulfilled, the symbol of evil prior to resurfacing had his quirk replicated by his physician, Kudai Graki, leaving All for One with the copied variant and Tamura with the original variant. All for One's quirk allows him to steal other people's quirks and use them as his own. He can combine his stolen quirks to create compound attacks with devastating effects. All for One can also redistribute his stolen quirks to other people. Some time ago, his quirk was duplicated by Dr. Garaki, and the original version of it was given to Tamura Shigaraki, with All for One keeping the copied version. Okay, so here's the thing. The body of All for One is stronger in general. The abilities of Tamura are very unique and very devastating. I mean, when you think about an ability for destruction, you're essentially disintegrating things uh, almost on like a near molecular level. So it's hard for anyone to be able to fight against you. I mean, if he grabs you, your whole body goes apart, right? As long as his ability is active. If you're touching the ground, now with this modification of the ability, if you're touching the ground when he touches it, you're dead too. So you better hope that you're up in the air when something like this gets activated. The fact that the original power was moved on to Tamura, right? I think it's so important to realize that that ability allows him to transfer his power. So since it's in him and his consciousness is in there, he should be able to actually transfer his power back to his original body <clears throat> and not using the replicated power. And this uh, bestowment back to him could give him the ability to fully escape and not only to do that, but then to teleport to different positions. Something else that I think is really important to note is the fact that it says that he has given other people powers. He can transfer these to other people, right? So it is very possible that All for One could end up going and finding all of these other people that are still alive, that still have these powers, and some of them may be owing him favors. And he takes those powers back. And he was waiting for the time to be able to use those in combination with this really destructive power. To me, Tamura has been a pawn in his eyes this whole time. And creating this facade like as if they're a family. But in reality, all for one, even in the name itself, is very narcissistic. It's about him and control and power. And everything plays into his position. That's my point of view on something like this. He's got some interesting powers here, as you guys can see. He's got the ability to search. He has a warping ability, an air cannon. He's got spring-like limbs, kinetic booster, strength enhancer, 
<clears throat> rivet stab, forced quirk activation, impact recoil, infrared, which is the ability that allows him to see with all that scar tissue he's got, air walking ability, multiplier, hyper uh, hypertrophy, Hi hy hyperthropy. I forgot how to say that. I'm sorry about that, guys. Uh, enlarges his arms. You got rivet, spearless, uh, spear like bones, life force, super regeneration, an unnamed hardening quirk, and an unnamed lightning quirk. Former quirks that he has, according to the article here, is power stockpiling, an unnamed quirk which allowed all for one to stockpile power. He gave it to his younger brother, causing it to merge with his quirk and create the quirk one for all, right? So, that is no longer in his possession, but obviously he wants to get that back. So if he is trying to obtain previous powers, one of which we know is the stockpiling power, which was from one for all, what is to say that he won't want to go back for other powers too? Muscle augmentation. He also had overclock. Uh, you got sev uh, several other unnamed quirks. Uh, such as All for One provided transferred several quirks to fighters in the underground masquerade, including an electrification like power, beast like traits, making the user turtle like with a spike shell and cannon on their back, granting the user wings and plates of arms, giving the user arm size, making the user wolf like, a strength enhancer, and a reptilian transformation. It is also possible that he possessed some, if not all, of the following quirks to which he gave to his Nomu. Right? And that's another important thing. He could end up trying to take back powers from the Nomu. Absorption and release, tongue web, muscle augmentation, wings, tool arms, shock absorption. Super moves that he has are the enhanced air cannon and the ultimate quirk combination. He combines spring-like limbs, four kinetic booster quirks, three strength enhancer quirks, multiplier, uh, hypertrophy, or however you say that, rivets, air walk, and spear-like bones to greatly enhance his right arm. This combination of quirks is what All for One attempted to use in order to kill All Might. He even added impact recoil onto this combination to better his chances of defeating All Might. Now keep in mind, when he had this fight, he didn't have his original quirk. He actually had the replicated one, right? So back here again, it was revealed that he foresaw the possibility of his defeat, knew that if this were to happen, he would be unable to transfer his quirk. To ensure the inheritance of his powers was fulfilled, the symbol of evil, prior to resurfacing, had his quirk replicated, <clears throat> leaving all for one with the copied variant, and Tamura with the original. And the original is oftentimes stronger in these kinds of scenarios. So you guys, we got Endeavor. Let's talk about this for a second here too. He was the number two hero and then took over the position to be the number one greatest hero that's out there. And with the revelation of his son, Dobby. It's so it's so sad when you think about it. He thought his son was dead. And uh, you know, let's go ahead and pull this up. Thought I had this image up here, but you know, you look at his son, and you look at the family positions that they have. Endeavor was so rough on his family, just to begin with. And now that he's trying to make amends, this is like a ghost that's haunting him. I mean, look at Dobby. He almost looks like a zombie, the way that he's stapled together. Quite literally, held together by staples, right? And you can see the scars that Dobby has on his face, and you also see on his brother. He also has scars. His father has scarred his family's name and now because of this revelation it also puts a huge hindrance on the faith that all the people out there just started to have on the hero society or more specifically on endeavor himself and these doubts are cast into people's minds they're thinking about moving away they don't know if they can trust the organization now people don't know who they can trust who's in the right Who's in the wrong that planted seed that is such an important pivotal point because if you are fighting to protect the rights of your people and your people can't even trust you, what are you fighting for anymore? You're fighting for people 
who are choosing the other side. And you can try to enlighten them. And that's where a huge struggle comes into play. But ultimately, if the people choose the other side, you are now the enemy. You are now labeled as the villain. And as we oftentimes see, morality is based on a level of perspective. A lot of villains go out with a quest to achieve a goal because in their heart, in their mind, they believe that that is good, that that is just, that that is right, that that is what will move society forward, that that is what will move life forward, that that is the right perspective on what you should have. And obviously, they're villains, which is why heroes come in and have to reveal what the actual truth is. But the debate about who is right is what causes the level of conflict. Sometimes you will have characters that are just looking for pure chaos. They know that something's evil and they, they thirst for it. Sure, you have those kinds of moments, but oftentimes it's an objection based on morality. Looking at Deku, he has developed a new ability yet again. But now, having just gained another separate ability, how well can he adapt to this? We do know that he had been doing some preparations in lineup to this, and we also know that there's going to be a series of other abilities. We also know that his body is not at the level that it needs to be to be able to handle using more of the percentage full potential of all for one. Or for, sorry, one for all. I get those two mixed up sometimes. So the thing is, he is going to have to continue to develop his mind as well as his body. And with the level of strain that he just went through, his body cannot continue to hold this up. Something is going to have to change. What I would love to see, I don't know about the rest of you guys, but I absolutely love to see the training regiment that characters go through in anime. When Deku first got his ability and he's training out on the beach, and you know he's really working on his muscles, everything to try and be able to handle this power to some degree. I enjoyed watching that. I liked watching Goku traveling in the the capsule core spaceship, heading over to Namek, and he's doing you know a hundred times gravity handstand push-ups and throwing punches, showing those little kind of moments from time to time to to basically indicate to people that look, this person is not just a God-given talent. They're not just magically strong. They only get stronger from just fighting. They legitimately are taking the time to develop themselves physically. And it's also fun too. You see how big the objects are and you start thinking about, well, if this was real, how much would that be? And this is the kind of stuff that then leads into those things like death battle, right? Where they can say, hey, look, this person blew up the city. And based on the city, it was comparable in size to this other city in real life. So we knew it cost or it required this much energy. So I, I find that kind of stuff really interesting. Now, I'm wondering if in the next arc, we are going to be able to see Deku be able to handle 50% consistently, right? So he's pushed his body to the limit. And obviously it pushes back on him and it hurts him quite tremendously. I'm also curious if with this new shadow limb-like ability that he has, if he can use that as a way of essentially restraining himself but also multiplying himself at the same time. I don't know if that quite makes sense. So almost like a bandage being wrapped around his arm as he's throwing the punch, right? So you're essentially keeping all your muscles tight and close together but allowing yourself the full extension i don't know something like that I, i'm just throwing out some random ideas here i'm looking forward to seeing what you guys have to say what you guys think in the comments down below i'm just doing some wild speculations on these things so all for one i think he's coming back with a vengeance i personally think he's going to gain all of his uh, full abilities his original abilities back i think he could be responsible for the death of of Deku and All Might's mentor. Um, and uh, I also think that there is a good chance that Tamura is going to survive this in some way, but he's going to be a shattered remnant version of himself, which would be 
very interesting because you think of his special power of disintegrating things, right? So if he's a shattered version of who he used to be, like a guy that has no special power now who can't kill anybody, that's going to change his character development. It's going to change what kind of a direction that he could go to. And this could be one of those moments where he actually starts to move towards the good guy side and we could have that challenge and i wouldn't even be surprised if at some point as he starts to befriend the good guys he's now given an opportunity to once again become a villain and he has to make the decision between the two we're speculating way in the future here but these are my thoughts on something like this endeavor is going to have to step up how he is going to be able to get the acknowledgement of his people once again i think is going to be very difficult and frankly i don't necessarily think it's going to be him that's going to be able to convince the people i think it's going to be more the actions of the other heroes and the fact that they stand in uh, in line in support with endeavor showing that they believe in him and if they believe enough in him then the people can believe in him too i think that might be the kind of case that we saw uh there was a lot of disbelief going on towards the last of the anime season and he had just gotten their you know approval so the fact that it's already waning it's it's very <laughs> it's very confusing guys all right i'm gonna go ahead and wrap up my uh my video here so if you guys are new to the channel once again you enjoyed this don't forget to hit subscribe hit the thumbs up like button let's try to get to at least 100 likes on this video if you can please click the bell icon as well so that you know whenever we have a new video feel free to check out my manga revival the link is in the description you can read that for free free no money also, there's a link to my animation channel. You guys are awesome. Thank you all so much for being here. You guys uh, drop comments down below. Tell us all your thoughts and opinions, and I will see you guys in the next episode.